I'll get you yet, even if it kills me. You hear me? You hear me, HP Lovecraft? I had fallen off so many cliffs it was ridiculous. That's what you get for naming a book the sudden stop. It was probably good I hadn't had the chance to tell Maine where I was going. I'd have to lose the cops and find my own way to the mine. Well, it looks like he's just going to keep showing up no matter where we go. And he must have like a list of writers that he just loves spouting off or something. But at least this time in the woods, things get off to a pretty quick start. Now, I wouldn't always recommend when you kind of hear the background noise um, to start a generator, but if you're pretty sure that there's no one near you, it's a pretty safe bet that you can just start it. Especially when it creates a checkpoint like this. It's not to say they're not going to sneak up on you as soon as you leave. At least they were kind enough to not give me too much trouble. But coming up here, we have two collectibles that are probably the most out-of-the-way collectibles in the entire game. So let's just speed this up. There's a thermos about partway up the mountain, and then a manuscript page that's at about the top. And it takes quite a while to get up there. And there's no other reason to come up here. It's just for this thermos, and I guess the view. So we can see the radio station and the train station, the tower over there that we're trying to get to. And if we just go up here to the base of this tower is where the manuscript page is. We can speed that up as well. Uh, and we're lucky enough to get a couple flares, too. So let's head back down. You know, there can't be anything waiting for us, right? I guess there can. And for whatever reason in this fight, I just don't know where they're coming from, so I end up spinning in circles and doing pretty poorly. But they just kind of disappeared, so let's keep heading on down. Can't wait for them to show up again. Like now. Well, that went a lot better. And with that little fight, we're done with our detour, and we can get on with going through the woods. Oh, great. So that was an unexpected kind of ambush. I'm a little low on ammo right now, so I'm starting to get a little worried. There was no sensible reason for the power company work lights to be here. It was almost as if they'd been left for someone like me to use. Yeah, they've been left here, but there's no real use for them. Well, that was nothing. Or not. Oh, hello. He's trying to sneak in. And then I'll take care of him for now. So we picked up a shotgun. It's going to be pretty useful in these upcoming sections. And it's not going to be unusual for the rest of the game to have sort of good weapon drops, but you're surrounded as soon as you pick them up. 
And we can't go just yet. If you can see off in the distance on a gate, there is a manuscript page. So let's just quickly run out there and get it. And then just quickly come back. And you can never go too long in this section without hearing that weird ambient whatever that is. It's a lot more about anticipating the enemies than anything. And this section is just filled with collectibles. So let's stock up and get going. Hello? The most stubborn man I've ever met. Alice? Alice? Alan. Alan. I'm so afraid. It keeps me in the dark. Please help me. I look at you, Alan, and it's not you. It's something else. Looking out from behind your eyes. Alice, I'm here. I'm so alone here. It's all gonna go to hell. You need to be careful. Cooperate. The connection had been terrible, but that wasn't the only thing that hadn't been right with the call. She sounded wrong somehow, but she had called me. She definitely didn't seem right. And what she was saying was kind of just rambling we'll find out what she's talking about later but for right now that doesn't make any sense and here we have sort of a safe house ammo cache sort of thing I mean it's not like there's been a weird ambush in a shack like this before right Looks like they're getting crafty and they're starting to use the trees for cover. That or they just can't get close. But let's head back down to where we were going. I could see a railway bridge up ahead and a warehouse of some sort on the opposite shore. I hoped I could find a car from there. Well, let's follow the sign and follow this path up to this ladder. This next part is going to introduce a mechanic that I am not a huge fan of, but I understand why it's included in the game. And even if you're on the easiest difficulty, if you get stuck in the wrong position here, you're really not going to have a good time. The darkness that was pursuing me was growing stronger, and it was taking over everything in its path. Literally everything. So here's essentially what it does, it'll kind of possess inanimate objects, lift them up, and then throw them at you. And usually they're very heavy, and on this difficulty, just three hits will kill you. Thankfully though, that wasn't too bad. If you can see things on the other side of the gate are still kind of being thrown, they're kind of falling off the cliff, which is the same as defeating them. They just kind of blow up by themselves. And we just need to take care of this wheelbarrow, and we can finally head on past that nightmare.
but this section's nightmares have really only begun. As a teenager, just starting to get interested in writing, Stephen King had been a source of inspiration to me. I thought about all the inanimate objects that had come to life in his books. No one is safe in a good horror story, certainly not the protagonist. That's what makes them fun. This was anything but. The darkness could possess anything, and it was getting closer. So, we've been getting better and better guns like the hunting rifle and the shotgun, but now we have a better flashlight. The heavy-duty flashlight is just a bulked-up version of the original. It'll get rid of the darkness on objects and people a lot more quickly, and it might use up battery a bit more quickly, I'm not sure if it does, but I usually have more than enough batteries that it doesn't really matter. And it's the second of three uh, flashlights in the game, and we won't see the third until way late in the game, so we don't really need to worry about that right now. But now that we're done collecting all the ammo and the thermos that was in the back, we can move on. Or we can wait around and fight. Now this fight didn't really go as planned, and they ended up ganging up on me, so I kind of panicked and threw a flashbang. But I apparently timed that well enough to deal with all of them. But what I was trying to do in the beginning was shoot one of these canisters, and when you do, they explode like that. And when they explode, it's kind of like a flashbang going off. So, if you don't have a flashbang and those are lying around, you can use one of those. But as you can see, the light on these bad guys goes away a lot more. It's kind of hard to tell with the big guy, but it's going down a lot more quickly. I'd usually have to run backwards a bit more. That'll finish him off properly. Now I kind of want to conserve ammo for the shotgun for this next part coming up, but it's more a fight that you need batteries than the flashlight for. We've got a TV in here, so we can't leave just yet. We take the facts of our existence for granted, unaware that they are merely a thin veneer of desperate self-delusion, covering a vast cosmos of madness and horror. All too often, the stars are right in Night Springs. Tonight's episode, A Family Occasion. Journalist Alvin Durlis' trip to study the local customs of an insular community in Night Springs has been less than successful. Until tonight. Well, I'm glad you changed your minds about this. Ancient customs, local mythology. My editor loves this kind of stuff. Well, Mr. Durlis, we don't want to feel like we're on exhibition. But you have demonstrated the seriousness of your intent. Oh, I am serious. Really, just do your thing. I'll stay out of your way and observe. Actually, I thought you could assist us. I'm afraid we are a man short. It would provide you with an intimate perspective. Could I really? Of course, Mr. Durleth. Well, I guess that's the least I... What would I have to do? Oh, here. Let me show you with a kiss. I, um, I... <laughs> So at least the other episodes of Night Springs were bizarre but kind of believable in a weird, 
sense. That was just straight to the point crazy. And to be honest, I'm not really sure how it relates to the story. At all. So, here we have what is essentially a boss. A giant, possessed bulldozer that tries to kill you. The best thing to do right away is to take care of these three guys because they, in the cutscene, have gotten closer to you, so they're going to start attacking immediately. If you kill them, more will spawn, but they'll be kind of far away. And I believe as long as the bulldozer is still alive, they will infinitely spawn. So it's best to just take out the bulldozer as soon as possible. If you have any flares or flashbangs, it's a good time to use them. Since the bulldozer sort of backs up and goes forward kind of instantly, the best thing you can do is always try to stick to its side so it can never really turn to get you. And always make sure that you have it in sight. And soon enough, it'll be down. You'll have to get rid of the remaining enemies, but once the bulldozer's down, you should be fine. And we don't really need it, but it's not a bad idea to get some more ammo. Especially now that we have full ammo and 17 flares. Well, on the other side of that gate, it looks like we've got a truck. We've got another collectible. And then we're off. We can leave this creepy nightmare behind. I have never been this glad to see the sunrise. I had a couple of hours to get to the coal mine. Today, I would meet the kidnapper, and he would give me Alice. I wouldn't give him any other choice. A drowning man will clutch at a straw. Well, at least it's daytime out, but that means that we don't have a whole lot of time to get to the coal mine. So we might as well get started now. Little by little, without realizing it, I'd come to believe that the story in the manuscript was coming true. The current of its narrative had taken me deeper and deeper into dark waters. Alice had been taken from me. Barry was probably in jail. I was a fugitive from the FBI. The whole world taken over by the dark presence was trying to destroy me. It all felt real, but it matched a textbook case of insanity. But wait, I thought we already cleared this with Barry that we're not crazy because it was happening to him as well. Are we both crazy? What about the people we killed? Were they crazy? Did they really not die? What's going on? Was someone crazy enough to put a red chair on top of a cliff and then just kind of leave a thermos on it? Wait, this red chair seems pretty familiar. Hmm. Oh well, let's head back to the truck so we can get on. You know, until the next collectible. What's really crazy is how this truck handles. It's pretty hard not to slide into something. But as soon as we get started, we stop. There's a radio up at the top of the stairs inside of a shack, so we'll be able to go up and listen to that. 
We won't have to come back down for the truck because someone was nice enough to leave us a car up there that we can use. This is Pat Main, and you're listening to KBF FM. Folks, I want to apologize for kind of abandoning you to that looping music track last night, but I was detained. You see, I encountered a big shot G-man with an itchy trigger finger who could use a, a lesson in manners and a boot in the ass. Not necessarily in that order either. Now, folks, I know I'm not being very informative here, and I apologize for that. I really should just keep quiet, but I'm just so peeved right now because some people just shouldn't be carrying badges. I'm just glad that our Sheriff Breaker was there to straighten things out. And if someone I met last night is listening, let me just say, I'm sorry if my mouth got you in trouble. I'm pretty sure you're not the bad guy here. Godspeed, son. I hope you know what you're doing. Now, on a lighter note, I'll be talking to Dr. Nelson all morning. But first, a little music. Oh, I guess we don't get to listen to the music. Ah, all the more reason to get going. You know, meeting a kidnapper and all. That actually makes me think, now that we're just kind of collecting all the stuff to get and taking our time, I'm not really in a race to meet the kidnapper. And hitting bumps like that, as invisible as they were, isn't helping either. But as you can hear as I'm kind of going up this turn, I'm not really flooring it because if I were, I would very easily kind of slip and just go right off the cliff. So as much as you'd like to race up the mountain sometimes, it doesn't really work. Looks like we've got another ranger station up here. And really quickly after the last one, another radio. Welcome back to KBF FM. Hope you enjoyed that tune. Now, Doc, you were talking about life and finding that special someone, that soulmate. Well, you were talking about that. I was saying I don't buy it. Well, see, to me, that's strange, because I always pegged you as a hopeless romantic. <laughs> you got me there, Pat. But I think love's where you look for it. And you need to do a lot of looking, sure. But the idea that there's that one special person out there for you, and if you miss that chance, it's gone forever and you're forever incomplete. I mean, isn't that depressing? Or, heck, childish even? There's plenty of fish in the sea. <laughs> and apparently a fisherman has a fishing analogy for everything, but what you're saying, isn't that a little harsh? Well, no. What I am saying is that your potential for finding that connection isn't limited to what's essentially a chance encounter. How is that harsh? Yeah, well, I guess that's a nice thought, but let me say something personal here. Okay. Now, well, I, I don't disagree with you exactly, but I can't really fit that together with what I feel, what I what I felt for someone, because she was the one. She was. And she... I let her drift away from me. Maybe I didn't put in the work. I don't know, but... Well, since then, and it, it was a long time ago, but, but since then, there hasn't been anyone. Not like her. And I'm not saying I dwell on her or haven't moved on. I like my life. I'm not living in the past. But I do miss the way she completed me. You can't argue with the heart, Pat. Uh, I'm sorry, folks. I had kind of a scary experience last night, and let's just say it's shaken a few things loose. Well, I can agree with that. I'd be pretty alarmed myself if an FBI agent was shooting at me. Especially when I wasn't the target. Anyway, just in case you didn't like the last car, we've got one more that we can use. It really makes me wonder if there are people out there that somehow totaled the first two cars or drove them off a cliff and had to use this one. But we've got one last pit stop to make before the coal mine. I guess that kidnapper is going to have to wait. I don't know. I'm in no rush. I should be, though. 
At the top of these stairs is another manuscript page. But that's hardly the last collectible of this video. So, now that we've made it out of there, as slowly as it was, we can drive to the coal mine. But just like the other car, if you take corners too quickly, like if you try to floor through them, well, you won't really make the corner. was early. I was supposed to meet the kidnapper at noon in the main building. The coal mine was quiet. It was a museum now. Well, we've finally made it to the coal mine after all of that. All that's left to do is read a couple signs, collect a couple things, and then head inside. Meet this kidnapper. Find out what is going on. But, that's it. So, I'll leave you to read the rest of this really, really interesting, interesting history. It's fascinating. I didn't want to go outside. The cops had to be looking for me. The new sun turned the place into a sauna. The day dragged on. Different scenarios ran through my mind. Ways of how I'd torture the kidnapper to get Alice back. Or the different horrible things he could have done to her. I imagined her dead. I had no way of knowing she was still alive. It was killing me. Yeah. 